welcome back to the PRISM podcast. Today we have Dr. Jared Young, who is a dear, dear friend of mine, who really has a heart of service and truly just loves to help others. And in the episode, we talk about all things alignment, chiropractic, calibration, stress management, and really the importance of getting aligned, all of these things in the stressful and crazy world that we live in today. And Dr. Jared Young and I got connected not too long ago, and he actually helped me so much with posture and alignment myself. And he has so much experience in the last 10 years. He has really developed an integrated holistic wellness practice um, out in Orange County. So if you guys are there in California, please go visit him when you get the opportunity to. He's also the founder of a nonprofit Um, out in Orange County as well, which we talk about in the episode. But if you guys do enjoy this episode, please make sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up, whatever platform you're on, give it a rating and a review. Reach out to um, Dr. Jared and let him know what helped you, what impacted you, what you learned. Uh, I know that when people take time on these podcasts, they love to hear the feedback. It's so helpful for people who are being interviewed. So thank you guys so much for listening. And we're going to dive right in with Dr. Jared Young. All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. I have an amazing man with me today, Mr. Jared Young. And he is a really dear friend. And we, we have only really connected in person one time, but the one time that he worked on me as a chiropractor in the element, it actually, I will say, changed the way that I've lived ever since then, truly. And I don't even think I've told you this, Jared, but um, how you how you operate in your zone of genius is brilliant and it's effective and you can tell that you just love what you do. So um, I'm really excited to have you on the podcast. If you can, introduce yourself to the audience and just share a little bit about your story, how you came to be a chiropractor, and then we'll dive into all the questions. Sure. So, uh, so my name is Jared Young, and I, I, I went to the University of Texas in Austin, and have a degree in kinesiology, health promotion, and fitness. And there, at the in the, the program that that I went through, um, focused on spinal health and how the spine, you know, neutral spine is the key to, to health. And at the time, my 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 thinking was about musculoskeletal, you know, sports injury kind of kind of things. And, and in the in the program there at UT, we talked. We talked a lot about the sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system, but it didn't really land for me that the, the impact that movement has on those systems. Until years later, I went to chiropractic school um, as a result of, of actually my daughter getting injured um, mm. in gymnastics, and we took her to a, a medical doctor, and he said, "You have a couple months off in pain meds," and uh, we took her to a chiropractor. And, he did some what I now know is, is some myofascial release, did some kinesio tape on her, and she was right in the practice fixed. And I was like, I want to learn how to do that. That's really freaking cool, right? Still with the mindset of uh, you know sports therapy, uh, you know movement therapy. I want I want to make I want to help people to be able to keep moving, right? That was kind of my whole my whole passion. Um, and then in chiropractic school, I really is you know it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of anatomy, a lot of physiology, a ton of neurology. And I, it really sunk in for me um, how movement affects health, not just musculoskeletal joint health, but actual overall physical health in every way. If you understand the balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems and how those systems are impacted by how you breathe, how you stand, how you move, you start to really drop in. Okay, if I'm moving poorly, I'm more likely to get sick in every way more likely mm-hmm. to get diabetes, more likely to have anxiety, more likely to have you know, chronic pain, uh, more likely to have digestive issues, reproductive issues, all these things when your body's in a state of stress, in, a, mm-hmm. in that, that, that fight or flight state, then you're never really healing, right? And if you can learn how to manage your movement, your breathing, and your posture in a way to manage the stress response in your body, then, and this is, you know, it's really super gratifying for me to hear what you said, Sydney, about how your life is different now because we, we had this this time you maybe an hour together and i talked to you about these basic fundamental elements right and i, and I gave you, you know, these are the gauges you want to pay attention to here's how you want to be breathing this is how you want to do your workout so that you reinforce this and you being who you are miss type a get it done make sure i do it right <laughs> you know you grab it and you're doing it right and that yes. then carries into a lifestyle change a complete change and that's 
you know, in, in my practice, in my in, in everything that I'm doing, in the nonprofit we're working on, all the things that I do, I want to empower people to be able to have the tools to make their own life better, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to having to feel like I, I need to go get adjusted once a week. I did I need that? I need to go to the physical therapist. I need to go get a massage. I need you don't need anybody else to have a healthy life if you really are in, you know aware of how things play and how things work. So that's what that was. It, it makes me like, it fills my heart when, when I hear people like you say, you go ahead this one time and it made this massive impact. It's, that's, that's beautiful. I love it. Oh. Well, I, you know what I loved about the experience with you is I've gone to the chiropractor, you know, under a handful of times in my life and it's like you get in, they crack you, you leave and nothing changes. I mean, you might feel, you know, the click of your brain turn on a little bit more, but it's gone quickly. And so what I, the reason that I was like, I want him to be on here so people can really understand some things that they can maybe do or to look out for if they're going to get chiropractic adjustments. Um, the breathing, I want you to talk about the breathing because for me, the, the idea of how to breathe properly and how you taught me to breathe properly, that alone is worth gold because the way that it's changed my posture and my posture is horrible. It has been in the past. It's gotten so much better. And even just like, my ability to have a sharper memory, just everything. Can you talk about maybe for someone who's at home and they're like, I'm not going to go get chiropractic, but how can I breathe yeah. better? That's happening all day. Can you talk about the importance well, of breath and the way yes. we should be breathing? First, let me address the, the chiropractic adjustment real quickly. This is the chiropractic adjustment massively beneficial to health. And if you need to get adjusted every week, you can do better. You can breathe better. You can move better, right? Because so what the chiropractic adjustment does, and chiropractors across across the globe, if they watch this and hear me say what a chiropractor does, they're gonna be like, oh no, what do we do? Because there's there's like that's you know, okay. Like, they can do that. Yeah, you know, there's there's you know there's there are several different schools of thought of what what the chiropractic adjustment is doing. My perspective is that in your spine between between the first thoracic vertebra and the second lumbar vertebra. So basically where your rib cage is and a couple of vertebra below that, mm -hmm. in your spinal cord, that's where the sympathetic nervous system lives, right? So that fight or flight mm -hmm. response isn't something that happens in your brain, not even in your brain stem. It's, it's super primal, it's survival, that has to work or our species will not survive, right? So that happens in that part of the spine. In fact, if you, if you take a lateral cut of the spine, there's this thing called a lateral horn, so you know you're in that section because that lateral horn holds that sympathetic nervous system. Now, when you have any sort of interference with that, so your, your vertebrae are stacked like this, and if they're twisted a little bit or they're fixated or you know, they, they're, they're bent this way or that way, there's any kind of malposition of the, of the vertebra, there's going to be a little bit of tension on those nerves that are leaving those segments. Not necessarily enough that you have a neurological symptom like a numbness or tingling or anything like that, but just a little bit of a little bit of extra a little bit of extra push. A little bit. If you change the physical state of a nerve cell of a nerve fiber at all, it fires. So when you have poor posture, those nerves are being pulled tight. Right? You can see if I'm up here, they're neutral. If I slump down, they're going to get pulled a little bit tight. Just a little bit of tension in your back, right? So that's that little bit of tension makes those nerves fire. When they're firing, it's telling your whole body you're going to fight for your life. It's so like you described, when you get a, go get adjusted by a chiropractor, they're liberating the tension on that nervous system, so it feels amazing, right? You get this, this endorphin rush, you get kind of a tinkly brain, and, 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 and you actually get healthier. When my kids are sick, when my kids, you know, as they're coming up, when they've had a fever, you know, the kids do all the, you know, they're out there playing mm -hmm. blood, doing all the thing, they're going to get sick. I would adjust them. I would adjust them once or twice a day, right? Because I want, and, and they got, they got healthier a lot faster than their friends, right? And, and. You know, my, my youngest daughter, who's the one who was, she was a baby when I was in chiropractic school, she's like had the least health problems of all my kids since I started adjusting her. It, it's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's reams and reams of data that say that if you use chiropractic as your primary source of health care, you're going to spend, you know, some fraction of the amount that you would spend otherwise on your health care because you have mm -hmm. reduction of, of, of medication, erective surgery, it's all, it's very, very beneficial. I tell people what I do is about 20% chiropractic, right? Because my philosophy is that I want to take what chiropractic does and teach you to do it for yourself, right? Like personally, I get adjusted about once every four to six weeks. And daily, I'm putting myself back together from all the work that I do. Being a chiropractor is a very physical job. You know, I'm mm -hmm. picking people up, I'm moving parts, I'm, I'm 
Yo, I'm, I'm jumping on top of you. You've seen the videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so and it's a very physical job, right? And if I don't put myself back together, my body gets out of alignment, and then I need to get an adjustment. But if I'm every day putting myself back together, then I don't need that as often, right? And I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm able to kind of self-regulate. Breathing, we talk about, about breathing, the, the self-adjustment, and the impact of that. 99.x number of people who come into my office are not breathing with their diaphragm. And if you, if you just sit right now, this is like people aren't listening to the podcast, yo, I'm, this is going to be a test for you, Sydney. Let's see what you, let's see what you can do. I know. <laughs> right? so if you sit there and you take a deep breath, you want this to not rise and fall, right? Mm -hmm. It's all should be all down in the bottom of your ribs. Most people who do this test for them, you know, on their, on themselves, they're going to take a breath and it's going to be a, mine was literally of, like, <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's, and, and like when you're in a stressful situation, that's normal. That's a stress breath, right? When, when, when you lift your rib cage, that's breathing into the reserve capacity of your lungs. That's your body saying, Hey, I'm in a fight for my life. I need to do something more than just my average. But the problem is most people are breathing in their neck and shoulders every single breath that they take. So every single breath that people are taking is sending a signal to their whole body. I'm going to fight for my life. There is something that I need that I can't get that I need in order to survive. Or something's coming to kill me right now. Yeah. Right? That's not true. Most of the time. <laughs> you know, usually, yeah, most Never of the time enough. you're not in mortal danger, right? <laughs> but your body thinks you are, right? So this is this drives cortisol and adrenaline, which then drives inflammation. And inflammation then messes with systems and, and people will end up with so diabetes. Diabetes is your body's inability to process sugar properly. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Inflammation, bottom line. You, you can you can back it down, you know, there's all kinds but Inflammation that's stopping the cells from properly absorbing the insulin. Inflammation that's stopping the, the pancreas from being able to produce the, the proper amount of insulin. It's inflammation that drives all these disease patterns. So if we address the inflammation first by turning down the stress response and letting the body get into that healing state, then, we're, then we can really start to heal. So what breath and the proper position has to do with healing, there's so many layers, right? Because when you, when you breathe with your diaphragm, and you expand your rib cage, that gets it out of your neck and shoulders to get you out of that. You know, this is this is a fight position, right? When I'm fighting, my hands are up. I'm here. I'm ready to protect myself. Exactly, right? You put your hands down. Your shoulders in the same position. Your body still thinks you're in a fight, right? So you want your shoulders to be back in a neutral position. This is where posture comes in, right? But it's also it's impacted by breathing. Because you're breathing in your neck and shoulders. You're constantly pulling this forward. You're pushing your head forward with your with your breath. So undoing that pattern and having it be here helps. And you level that up by really – so what – actually, I own a yoga studio, and, and I, I work on a lot of yogis. And a lot of people who have been practicing yoga for a long time, they can – like in their practice, they get, they get out of breathing in the neck and shoulders, but then they drop into belly breathing, which is – you know, like breathing in your neck and shoulders, call that, we'll call that a D, right? D minus, right? Breathing in your belly, it's like a C plus, right? It's not, it's not oh, great because you're destabilizing your whole, your whole pelvic floor. You want to breathe in the middle. Right? If you read like yogic stuff, right? the yeah. yogis from India, they describe breath as between the navel and the rib cage. The westernization of yoga calls that belly breathing, which interprets into, I'm going to drop my belly out so that I can, I can pull air down into my lungs. And that's, that's not good. It's not good for your whole pelvic. Your whole pelvic stability is compromised when you're dropping that out. Breathing your diaphragm, expanding that, and actually breathing in the right anatomical place. This is the, the way that we're designed to breathe. You look at other mammals, you look at your dog, look at your cat. Their rib cage expands when they breathe. Right. Like the diaphragm is, is firing and expanding that rib cage and pulling it down in. And, that, and now that movement does some magical stuff. Like, seriously, magical. magical. It's the kind of stuff that, that makes people believe in magic, right? <laughs> because when I say, yes. when someone comes into my office, and they have pain, any pain, anywhere, no matter what it is. If I get them to breathe in their diaphragm, mo for most people, it's the first time that they that they breathe in the diaphragm for a long time. I get them to breathe in the diaphragm, pain cuts 20 to 50%, 100% of the time. Whoa. A reduction in pain, just by, even if it's, if it's pain in your finger, if it's pain, you know, you, if you pain anywhere, because when you breathe in your diaphragm, you're reducing cortisol. Right? And cortisol magnifies the pain signal. So just doing that one thing reduces pain. If 
the pain is, if the, if the nexus of the pain, the origin of the pain is in the spine, it goes down even more. Sometimes people come into my office, and it's not uncommon, they'll have low back pain for months or years, and I get them to breathe in a diaphragm, and the pain goes away. Like, oh. like this. And this is where like, holy, can I cuss? Is that okay if I cuss? I'm like, I'm like holy shit. All you want. Oh, what in the world? How? And I'm like, it's just your body. And they're like, you're a magician. Take all my money. <laughs> it's, it's really like, it's, it's a magical moment where people are like, holy crap. I've been living with this for so long. And, and I tell them, I want you to understand, because the first thing we do is get them bring them back. And I make sure they understand, I have not adjusted you yet. I haven't done any muscle manipulation on you yet. All we did was get you to breathe differently. And your pain is down. And now I'm going to level it up. When you, the reason, I'm going to talk about the reasons why. When you expand your rib cage, you're doing several fundamentally healthy things. When you expand your rib cage, that diaphragm is like a parachute up underneath your ribs. When it expands, it pushes your ribs out and then it collapses mm -hmm. back this way. And it has an anchor that goes all the way down the front of your lumbar spine. So when you're breathing through your diaphragm, you're pulling up on your lumbar spine with every breath. And that traction, mm -hmm. if you look up spinal decompression on the internet and ask how much does it cost to go have spinal decompression done, it's in the thousands of dollars. The machine to do spinal decompression, those machines can cost fifty to $100,000. Guess oh. what? You've got one inside you. All of us do, right? The diaphragm is a traction machine, right? That might be wow. like, like, your, like, your, like your million dollar body, right? So you have all these parts that are amazing that we don't generally use. And so when you start breathing your diaphragm, structurally, you're getting stability. It's the deepest, most intrinsic, core stabilizing muscle that you have. And 90% right. plus of people aren't even using it at all. You know, you do a thousand crunches, you do a, you know, a thousand side lifts. That's not even your core, right? Those are, those are moving muscles. Those are abdominal muscles. That's not your core. When you talk about the core, like you think about the core of an apple. Take an apple and I cut it in half. Where's the core start? You got the skin on the outside, then you got the meat. And then you have the core and then the seeds. Human body, mm -hmm. cut you in half. You got the skin on the outside. Then you got the meat. That's, that's your moving muscles, right? Then your core totally. is on the inside, just above your guts. Yeah. That's, so the diaphragm is the core. Then transverse abdominus on the bottom. I'll talk about that another day. <laughs> but the, so you're stabilizing your core by breathing in there. Then here's where the real magic, 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 magic happens. There's a, there's a nerve called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the nerve that tells your body to calm down. Everything's fine. Mm. You've got all that you need. It's time to digest. It's time to heal. It's time to regenerate. And when you expand your rib cage, the same nervous system mechanism that makes those nerves in your spine fire when you're in this position, it stretches those nerves, that nerve stretching, that fires that sympathetic response. Getting out of that turns off the sympathetic, out of that fight or flight response. And then you start expanding your rib cage, and now you're stretching out the, par the, the, the parasympathetic nervous system. You're stretching out the, the rest and digest nervous system. That, that vagus nerve is getting right. pulled. It touches every organ. It's like if you, look, if, you, if you look up vagus nerve on the Internet, there'll be like a lightning bolt out of the bottom of your skull, and it goes in. It touches everything. It touches your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys. Every organ is touched by mm -hmm. the vagus nerve. And when it's stimulated, it tells every single one of those organs, every system in your body, every cell in your body, heal. Wow. Do your healing work. So, so when you're in this fight or flight all day long, you're like, I need something now. In the next, in the next hour, I'm going to die. But then you start breathing and down regulating. You're telling every cell in your body to heal. And every cell in your body can heal. For years and years and years, we thought that there were certain cells that couldn't heal. Not true. We know that now, that cells can heal. There's not necessarily something that can be done externally. There's not a, there's not a pill you can take or a surgery you can have or uh, uh, you know, something that someone else can do to you to make your cells heal. But your own cells, your body, your, your innate intelligence knows how to heal every cell in your body. You just got to yes. give it a chance. So breathing into your ribs, breathing into that diaphragm, it's a game changer. You're giving yourself structural support. You're turning on the healing state of your body. And one more little thing I'll throw out there. The lymphatic system is an integral part of the immune system. So when you start breathing in your rib cage, there's more lymphatic tissue around the base of your ribs than anywhere else in your body. So when you're when you're pumping your rib cage like this, 
that acts like a bellows that moves all that lymphatic tissue, all that all that lymphatic drainage, it moves it all toward this little this little spot up here on the on the right side of your chest where it dumps back in your bloodstream where it can be dealt with. So with your like your immune system does its work, it sends these little white blood cells out into the space between between the blood vessels. It's finding the viruses, the bacteria, all the you know the little COVID 19 right? Finding them all, destroying them. It does its thing, and then there's little pieces. Those pieces of the of the of the antigen or the pieces of the bad guys are left out there. They're too big to diffuse back into the bloodstream. The lymphatic system picks those up and gets them out of the way. If you're not moving, the lymphatic system has no pump. It has it has nothing to move it. So if, right. for example, if you're sick, if you get the flu, you get you, you catch a cold, you have some sort of virus, and you're sick, and you're like, I can't move, right? If all you do is breathe really deep in your diaphragm, you're still pumping that system, and you will heal faster 100% of the time. 100% of the time, your immune function is better when you're breathing in your diaphragm. So breathing in your diaphragm, you get better structural support, you have lower cortisol, lower adrenaline, which, by the way, puts more dopamine and serotonin in your brain. Let's go. Allows more to get in, and your immune function is strong. Literally every single. So, like, how many of us? You know, I mean, I do a lot of work in addiction recovery, right? So, in the addiction recovery world, what addicts are looking for in their addictive behavior is dopamine and serotonin, right? That's what your body's right. like. I need this. I need this. I need this. If you just breathe properly, you reduce inflammation. You reduce inflammation that opens the blood-brain barrier. Then more dopamine and serotonin can get into your brain. So it feels great. I'll tell people. Wow. Okay, let's do this test, right? Sit there, rate your stress level right now. Scale of one to 10, wherever you are, rate your stress level on a scale of one to 10. And then sit up straight, drop your shoulders down, relax your face, and let's take five deep breaths in the bottom of our ribs, right? So just inhale and exhale. Just let it fall out twice as long as you did the inhale. All right, let it keep falling out. Let your shoulders fall, let your face fall. Inhale again. Let it all fall out. I want you to keep doing that. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit. I want you to keep doing that pattern. In for three to five seconds and out for six to seven. Like, like another, another few seconds like this. I'll go into addiction recovery centers or even corporate wellness environments. And I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll do this test with people. I'll say, okay, oh break, your, break your stress level. And, you know, they'll say, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, wherever it is. And then I'll do this with them. And I want you to ask yourself right now the difference between before you did that and after you did that. Do you feel any difference, Sydney? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, chill. I'm checking my heart rate. I'm like, I think it went down. Yeah. Like <laughs> heart rate drops. And like, Ooh, I feel good. And your mood is better. Yeah. You just feel calmer. Yeah. Right? Like, because what's happening in that moment, you just gave yourself the dopamine push, right? You calm down your cortisol, calm down your adrenaline. That opened up your blood brain barrier. Dopamine can pour in there. Yeah. That's, that's in your toolbox, right? That's in your body, your own ability to do that. So I tell people, you know, like even if you're dealing with, with any kind of addiction, cigarettes, Sweets. My 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 addiction is breaded sweets. I love chocolate chip cookies oh, and brownies. Before, <laughs> I love it. So the uh, but when you but before you before you feel this impulse, I need that thing. Take a second and just right. just breathe. And then after you, after that, you're like, you know what? I want to have that. It's fine, right? But you have the power to give yourself what you need. And and turning that script, flipping that script on the stress response. Is, is what I, I'm passionate about giving people the tools to be able to do. Because right? too often, we feel out of control. And we feel, and, and, and factually, my opinion is we're all out of control. You don't control anything. You're just, you're just, you're just along for the ride. You're doing, you're making your choices. But the truth is you don't have any, you have no impact. We don't have on, much control. <laughs> right? I mean, you, we, we try to make our, but the truth is no matter how good you are, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, how, by the rules you're, there are no rules, right? It's just life is going to come, come at you anyway. Great. So these things are happening out here. You know, so I'll, it, again, addiction recovery, corporate wellness. I go into a corporate wellness environment and I say, okay, what is stress? They'll list things like money, relationships, traffic, you know, my boss, my employees. I go into an, an addiction recovery center and I say, what's stress? Pain, depression, anxiety, wow. right? Wow. So, and I, and I help people see, okay, these, these things are two sides of stress. And in my vernacular, neither of them are stress. Right. right. So you have the things, work, relationships, you know, these things out here that cause stress. And then you have the results of stress, pain, depression, anxiety, right? Stress is what's happening inside you, that physiological response to these things that result in these things. And guess what? It's great. Stress is good. 
I need to make t-shirts. Stress is good. Stress keeps you alive. Stress makes life interesting. Imagine life without stress. That's no adrenaline, right? It's no, no. sex. It's like, oh, you know, not enjoying food. That's <laughs> <So, laughs> not for me. Life without stress is no good. It's not, it's not what we want, but it's this lie that we tell ourselves. It's, it's this, this, this false narrative that's put out there that we want to reduce stress in our life, that, we, that, that that's what we have to do. We have to reduce stress. There's, there's this future place where I'm going to retire and I'm going to have no stress. I had a patient come in a few years ago. He was like, I don't know what's wrong with me, doc. Everything hurts. I'm like, well, you got a lot of stress. I don't have any stress. I got lots of money. I got no kids. I don't need to work. I don't have any stress. I'm like, okay, you've, you've had some stress in your life and you're hanging on to it. You know, because it's, it's, we, we kind of have this false place in the future where there's no stress. The truth really? is getting a new job, stressful. Having a baby is stressful. Getting married is stressful. Getting into a new relationship at all is stressful. Going to a party is stressful. Getting dressed for the party is stressful. These are all Freeze. fun things. <laughs> I've seen you get ready for parties. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long is, time. Is, okay, it is stressful. It's fun, right? I mean, it's fun to... Those things that so to pretend that stress is bad is a really unhealthy perspective on the situation. You want to not have chronic stress. You want to, you don't want to be constantly in this. All right, this is what makes you sick. This is what gives you anxiety and depression and pain and diabetes and hypertension. Right, turn it down. Yeah. Diabetes, hypertension, pain, all these things just kind of melt away when you start down regulating your stress response. So that's that's that's. What I what what I what I want to offer right is that that information starting with breathing. Breathing is huge. Yes. It's it's essential. And then posture, right? Uh, yeah, I could talk literally days. I mean, about <laughs> posture and, and breathing. But these are just fundamental things that you have control of. You don't need, mm -hmm. you know, in some instances you do need some help because you're you've gone too far down the rabbit hole. And I'll say I'll say most Americans need some help. Right? They need mm -hmm. they need some direction. They need someone to say, okay, here's here's this and this. All of us needed a little bit every now and then. Some of us need more 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 mm -hmm. than others. Just like for example, your diaphragm. I have a lot of people come into my office. They cannot find their diaphragm. They can't breathe with it. They can't turn oh, it on. Wow. And so I have to spend I have to spend a significant amount of time just getting their diaphragm to turn on, and then they find it, wow. and then they can't do it by themselves, right? And then. They have to come back multiple times just to have that reinforced to turn the diaphragm on and strengthen right. that muscle, right? Right. So there's this, this kind of this, this, this progression from, you know, being unconsciously incompetent. You know, like a lot of your audience, they didn't know they were breathing wrong. So they're unconsciously yeah. incompetent, right? And then now they're sitting out there like, why can't I breathe without keeping my shoulders down, right? And I'm trying, I yes. can't. So you're in this state of, of conscious incompetence where you know you're doing it wrong, but you can't quite do it right, right? Yep. As you struggle with that, with something like this, that your body really wants to do, and you work, then you, you pass to this place of conscious competence where you're able to do it, but you have to think about it. Yes. And then as you practice that more, you're going to get into unconscious competence. Now, this arc of learning applies to everything in your life. Two plus two equals four. At first, you were, you know, in kindergarten, you did not give a damn. You're like, I don't care. You know, just, I got to do it. But then you, you didn't know you didn't know, right? And then yeah. every, everything you ever learned in your life, you didn't know you didn't know it. Then you knew it, but you couldn't quite do it. And then you knew it, but you had to really think about it. And then you just know it. Two plus two is four, right? And it's just, yeah. I'm riding a bike. That's just, I'm just getting, I don't. So these are just how we learn things. So don't get frustrated mm -hmm. with yourself. If you can't do it right, right now, it's great. It's fantastic. You're on this arc of learning. You're where you, you're where you are, and where you are is perfect. So turn down your shoulders. Yeah in your diaphragm and practice and struggle with it and, and play with it. Look up, I mean, I've got stuff on the internet. There's all kinds of stuff on the internet about how to breathe with the diaphragm. Look it up, find who else, whoever who else you know, who resonates with you and do that thing. And there's all kinds of, I, I teach a kind of a fundamental breathe in and out twice as long as you breathe in. I know that's where I start people, but yeah, there's, there's, there's triangle breathing, square breathing, you know, I don't know, there's probably, Pentagram breathing. I don't know, there's like yeah. all, all these you know, different breathing techniques and different, and they're all fantastic and they're all great. And none of them are as effective as they could be unless you're breathing with your diaphragm, right? Actually expand your rib cage with every breath. Every breath, expand that and then train yourself to have that be a gauge for stress. Because when you're in a stressful situation, you're going to breathe faster and in your neck and shoulders. And let that be like a little red flag. Oh, I'm aware of this. And if you're actually in a stressful situation, it's okay. It's fine. It's healthy. It's a good, healthy response. Right. Don't be upset with yourself about it. Be aware of it. And then when you're out of the stressful situation, give yourself a half a second to downregulate. 
I guess, get my shoulders out of my ears, breathe in my diaphragm, <sighs> let it out, right? Reset. Throughout the day, 5, 10, 15, 20 times, depending how stressful your life is. <laughs> you know, I've got, I've got four kids, 20 employees, like five businesses. It's I've, got so right good. Now. I've got a nonprofit. i got all kinds of stuff coming at me, right? Yeah. It's just a mess. <laughs> but it's a beautiful mess, and it's perfect, and it is what totally. it is. No, no, no. There's things at you, and you just got to down-regulate and then deal with what's in front of you. And be okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with this now. And Or, you know, because otherwise, if you're in this, oh, right here, all of your business, another thing. Take, take your hand, Sydney. Take your hand. Put your hand like this. Like this? And then put your hand in your face. Don't touch your face. And you, okay. yeah, keep it there. Anybody with an older brother has had this. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. How does that feel? Yeah. <laughs> now take your hand and pull it away from your face. So annoying. It's super annoying. It's your own hand. Imagine if it was mine, right? Now your hand's out here. It's fine. Right? So this, this is all your problems. Totally. Right? This is everything that's stressing you out. When your body is in a fight or flight state, it's right here. When you down regulate, mm -hmm. it goes out here. It's the same problem. The There's same no. size and shape. It's not different, but out here you can be like, you know what? That makes, me, that makes me sad, but I'm not depressed. That makes me mad, but I'm going to put it yes. there and deal with this, right? Being angry is fine. Being sad is fine. Even having your emotions and living in them is fine. Where you start to have problems is when they start mm. to control you. When it's here and you feel like, I have to do something about it right now. Well, you really don't, right? Or you can't, right? There's some things, you know what? This is something It's upsetting to me. I can't do anything about it. I'm going to put it over here, right? Or you know, this is, so you may start making choices instead of feeling like I need to react to this right now because it's life or death. And this is just how we're wired, right? right. So you, that's, the, that's the power of breathing your diaphragm, of having good posture and understanding these gauges for stress in your life and how to use them. That's so, so good. And what I will say, you guys, is that when I met Jared and he, he was gonna adjust me before he even touched my body to adjust me, I don't even think you did adjust me. You were like, nope, we're not doing that. And we spent so long and he taught me how to breathe and he taught me about my posture. And that moment changed so much for me. Um, but what I loved about that experience was you also did something called recalibration. And again, I don't even think that you adjusted me, but I would love if you could touch on the idea of breath and recalibration versus just crack crack and you're out the door because the calibration i think in alignment with the breath created this like in my body that allowed everything to work together so yeah. can you can you talk a little bit about recal or calibration or recalibration and then yeah. if that's something people should really just focus on like breath and calibration or going to get in their neck cracked yeah so the calibration is is something that we do in my clinic it's something that i kind of I, I, I picked up from a guy named david rubenstein um back when i was finishing up chiropractic school and you know, at that point he, he it's such a powerful powerful thing that he really thought and, and and probably still believes that it was like it was the solution right it replaced all chiropractic office if you just if you just calibrate people they're just falling in wow. line um so I, I use that as an integral part of, of my practice i train my staff to do it and it's a, it's a technique that uses very low resistance, very slow movement patterns to, 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 to show the brain where there are these disconnects in movement. And you end up getting these little stutters, these little shakes. And it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunately, it's not something that you can do to yourself, that I've, that I've, I haven't found a way to have people mm -hmm. do this for themselves, right? So, um, but I am, I actually, actually just, I, I just made a little partnership with a, with a, with a university here in San Salvador where we're going to actually teach as part of their curriculum um, because it's a super wow. powerful tool, a super, super powerful tool in getting people to change how they move, right? So the muscle memory that you have, how you move, it's developed in infancy. You start as a, you know, you'll see kids, they'll walk and sit and, and, and interact just like their parents did. It's not genetic. It's a learned thing. You, you, you watch someone and you mimic how they move. That's how you learn how to move. So your muscle memory is a lot of times generational even. It's, it's just it's this muscle memory mm. pattern. So breaking those patterns and wow. resetting into a neutral, an anatomically neutral pattern is really hard to do. The calibration technique that we use accelerates the acceptance of that. So like in your case, you know, I was like, I was like, here are these things. You're there's a couple, of and you know, you have, you're, 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 you're definitely a, a unique specimen. And then, you know, I'm looking at you. It's like nitpicky, right? Like there's just a couple of things off. Totally. Those couple of things, because honestly, because of your intensity of how you live life being off a little bit gets really magnified, right? And so making those couple little little like corrections 
and then calibrating you, you just being aware of it, then your brain went and made a bunch of corrections to that that you talked about. You know, that yeah. it's what I find is what I would what I would manually correct um, with a, with, a, with a chiropractic adjustment. About eighty percent of it gets corrected by the body on its own after calibration. So I'll calibrate. I'll do a hand calibration, right. and then get up and everything kind of falls in line because we're, we're stimulating the central nervous system wow. in directions and it's really really cool to watch <laughs> again in, the, in addiction recovery because you get this really kind of endorphin rush i uh, I, I did a, a demo for some for some therapists in, in an addiction recovery center and this guy his hips were, were all wonky and he had a bunch of pain and, and i did this calibration on his hips it takes about five or ten minutes to do like a, a, a calibration session treatment and I, I was doing the calibration as i was explaining to the other therapist what i was doing and then I said, okay, I want you to get up and walk around. And he's like, what? And I was like, okay, well, how's your pain? Pain was gone. And he was, you know, his low back pain was like a five or six, and then you know, just needing his hips to move better. Pain went away. Also did some breathing with him at the same time. And he gets up, he stands up, and he's like, I feel like I just had a hit on a joint. <laughs> I've been sober for four and a half years. Deserve this. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> like he's, he's like, like, I am paying you. Yeah. So like, like, like in, in, in the recovery centers, people people call it a free lapse. Wow. Like, oh, this is awesome. I get, I get to, like this little this little little endorphin rush. Oh, do they get a little high while they're yeah, in there? Yeah, it, it feels good. It's like whoa, like your body's like because your body wants this. It wants to be neutral. It wants to be wow. in, that, in, that, in that neutral place. So when you kind of give it that stimulus to get there, it's like boom, everything kind of falls in line. And then, and then we see, like, I'll get him and I'll say, okay, these muscles actually need to get released, right? Because you've been in that place for so long that the physiological changes happen in the muscle when you get in a strip right. like that fascia, when you strengthen these muscles to, to counterbalance this tension. So there, there's, there, there's work that needs to be done after calibration in most people. Like I said, in your case, because you are so intense and you try to do everything right, right? You work out right, you do your things right, but there's these couple little things. Yeah. I made those changes and then calibrated and boom. It was like massive change. One time, one and done. Yeah. And it's, it's great, right? It's not common. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not a common yeah. experience to have what you did because, I mean, candidly, you know, most people don't work out as often as you do and as efficiently as you do. They don't eat as well as you do. They're not keeping their body in, you know, in that. Mm -hmm. So we want to ch train people to do this. You know, we've got this 12 week program. We're like, we're going to do a, just a transformation program. We're going to be like, okay, we're changing your habits and change how you breathe, change how you stand, how you, how you, mm -hmm. how you eat, how you drink. Uh, implement meditation in your life and then start having you do service for other people. Understand that what you're doing for yourself is actually helping other people because if you're actively trying to help other people and you're sick, you're not going to be able to help them anymore, right? So then your exercise exactly. routine, your meditation routine, your self-care becomes an act of service and that changes the script for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You really start to understand your, you know, your role in society and your responsibility to be healthy. Because if you're not healthy, it's not just your problem. If you're not healthy, Everybody it's else is. everybody's yeah. problem. It's your kid's problem. It's yeah. your spouse's problem. It's your parent's problem. It's your neighbor's problem. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? If you're not healthy, everyone's insurance premiums go up. If you're not healthy, everyone has to make, you know, everyone has to adjust to the unhealthy people, right? So we have responsibility to yes. each other to be healthy and to find ways to get healthier. Mm -hmm. No matter how healthy we think we are, we always have to find ways to get healthier and to, and to get you know more connected to nature and more connected to God and more connected to each other, because if we're not, then we're going the other way, right? Mm -hmm. God, you are such an inspiring man. It's just the like, and even knowing that you didn't something you didn't talk about is you didn't even get into chiropractic until you were in your thirties, I believe, right? Right. That's yeah. it's it's amazing to see like how much you have just learned and taken on and then executed on and like implemented immediately. You're so brilliant. I'm just like, you're so brilliant. And in, again, I've been to so many chiropractors as far as just crack, crack, but ever since you, like I worked with you, my breathing has changed. My posture has been different. And it's, it's actually, like you said, I've really been able to integrate it to the point where a hard thing happens and I'm able to manage it because of simply my breath. And that is the biggest gift for the people around me, especially because I am so intense. And so that I'm just like ever in, in debt to you for that. But what I love is that you do this for so many people and you're so passionate about it and you're integrating it in 
facilities and arenas and professions that are in really big need of it. And so that is something that I love so much about you. And with that being said, I do want you to touch on, if you can, as we're wrapping up, um, about where you are right now and what you're doing um, with your nonprofit. Because yeah, so I really, right I think, and yeah. And uh, we're, we're, we're doing some really cool stuff. The, um, everything that we do in the clinic, everything we do at the yoga studio, everything we do online, it all, all the profit from that goes back into this nonprofit effort to empower people to be healthy, right? And that's, you know, for a few years now, we've been, we've been paying for a, a group of kids from this, this village next to the farm that my family's owned for generations. Um, we've been busing the kids from there to the other side of the volcano so they can get to school. And then that has turned into wow. this project of now we're, I'm here right now in El Salvador, we're setting up an English and a computer skills school on the farm for the, for the kids and actually the parents too. I invited the parents to participate in this as well. And then we're setting up a, uh, uh, an online telehealth holistic clinic. So I have a couple no of biologists. I've got you know, myself, I have some other holistic doctors who are kind of lined up to give online counseling to people on how to make these lifestyle changes in this, in this little village. They have the same problems everyone else does. They have diabetes, hypertension, chronic pain. And so, but then what I asked them, when I kind of pitched this to the village council, well, if I do this here, um, is it going to be helpful? And they're like, yeah, it'd be great. What do we need to do? I said, well, we can either have, you know, eat a lot more vegetables. And they're like, oh, those are really expensive and hard to get here. And I was like, okay, well, we'll, we'll grow them for you, right? So we're, 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 we're putting, we're wow. putting a, a, community, a community garden farm to provide the vegetables. And we actually, they, well, we're going to have a little chicken farm as well to provide, you know, fresh eggs to, um, to the population there. So when someone comes into the clinic and they say, you know, I want to change my lifestyle, okay, great. Here's what you got to do. And here's the food and the herbs and the food, you know, the stuff that you need to do to change that. And um, super, super exciting. Um, as I've been down here, I've been running into a lot of like-minded people here in the local community. And we're doing some really, really fun and exciting things that uh, mm -hmm. it's really changing people's lives. That's so amazing and inspiring. So amazing, incredible. You're a fabulous, fabulous human. And I'm so grateful to know you. I'm like, come back to Austin so we can do another <laughs> recalibration. I think I'm almost probably ready for one. But uh, where can people find you? How can they work with you? Like, where are you located? Give us all the deeds. Um, well, the, uh, Peak State Wellness. You can look us up on Facebook, Instagram. It's Peak State Wellness. Um, that's probably the, that's the best way uh, to, to, to get a hold of me and, 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 and work with me and my team. Um, triad Fit Kids. Uh, if you look up triadfitkids.com, T R I A D F I T K I D S.com, that's the nonprofit. If you want to donate, if you want to donate time, if you have an idea of how you might be able to help, we're open to all of them. If you want to come down to El Salvador and help us, we're, we're, we're building out uh, like a, a, a whole tourism uh, facility on my farm that's going to fund the whole thing here in El Salvador. We're going to go to other villages. Um, actually, I'm working with a hospital in Kenya already. Um, I sent them uh, information on, on herbs and things to grow. And they sent me a picture just yesterday. They, they've started growing and starting to sprout. And they're super excited. It's fascinating in these, these, these underprivileged communities how much they've lost of just basic kind of health things. You know, I was on the phone with this guy in Kenya. He's a, he's a doctor, and, and he had a patient in his office who had upset stomach, and she was just in a lot of pain. And uh, they couldn't get the medication that he had prescribed for her. It just wasn't available for her. And like, you know, do you have any ideas? I'm like, well, I don't know. Um, yeah, how about you just do like a ginger mint tea? And they look at me, both of them, just blank, blank stares. What do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? What do I mean? Do you have, do you have ginger? To them. And they were like, you mean the root? Yeah. Do you have ginger root? Yeah. Yeah, we have ginger. And do you have like mint? I'm like, yeah, we have mint. You make a tea out of it and, and see if that helps her. They asked me for a recipe. They're like, well, can you send us the recipe for the tea? I'm like, okay. So I just, I, I, I wrote him an email, shave some ginger, like ginger and mint. break up some mint leaves, put it in a pot and boil it. And then two days later, I got on a follow call. Oh, doc, it's so good. Yeah, I'm better. I, my, my, pain, my stomach pain went away. Right. And it's like, they just lost this, you know, just the, the real simple little things that they can do to, to, to take care of themselves. You know, it's just been kind of trained out of society by the, by the Western medicine model. And Western medicine does it does magic on its own, and it's a piece of the solution. It's not the whole thing, and 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 so we're we're, we're trying to infuse this back into communities mm -hmm. that, that need it. Wow, oh, I absolutely love that. Well, what I'm gonna do, Jared, is I'm gonna post 
Um, when we launch the episode, we're going to have all the links below so people can donate, people can check you out, they can learn from you because I know I've learned so much from you. I'm excited to see you continue to grow, especially on social media and hopefully through podcasts and, and things in the future so people can learn because you are such an incredible teacher, such an incredible person, and you have such a heart of gold. So thank you so much for your time today, and um, I just appreciate you.